Well, that last reaction is a member of the Defence Council of Mr Shore, who dismissed the claims of the DSS as a high-level drama woven to distort the fact of the matter. He talked about the video uh, he sent to support some of the claims uh, that the DSS personnel were really involved in the arrest of Mr Shore in court. Well, still talking about the issue, we have joining us, um, and this is looking at the different perspectives to the rearrest of Mr Shore by the DSS. Susan Henshaw, a legal practitioner, joins us from Abuja Studios. Um, and we also have here in um, Lagos, Mr. Stanley Iharuo, a pro, uh, sorry, and you're a legal practitioner first, but then sympathetic uh, to show us matter. I would like to thank you both for joining us at this time. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, perhaps we should start with you here, uh, Mr. Ihurarua, and that is your take on the way things seem to have deteriorated in the Shores case. Yeah, there's no doubt uh, it's a sad commentary about our country because uh, we are making a world headline for the very wrong reason, not for good ones. Uh, you could see from uh, the videos circulating everywhere that operative of the DSX were indeed within the court premises, and they made an attempt to arrest Mr. Sowery and the co-defendant, Mr. Madith. Of course, there was confusion. We are embarrassed that, despite the uh, reality that the operator of DSS were involved in that uh, commotion, the DSS issued a statement denying the particular path. We know the operatives who've been in court severally, and then you see the operatives walking side by side, uh, Mr. Sowode and Bakai. So there's no way they could deny that their officers were not uh, involved. They were involved. They were the one responsible for the desecration of the court uh, on that very day, 6th of uh, December. It's quite embarrassing. And uh, this is not the best thing to be a lawyer in this country, I must confess. Let's go to another lawyer, Susan Henshaw. Your take on, on how everything is playing out, because um, from where it stands, I, I believe you're in support of the position of the presidency on the matter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, let's not get things convoluted, because I think that, you know, um, people get things convoluted, and, you know, and then get the... Uh, general public to believe one thing or the other. But here's the thing. If the SSI, I mean, the, S, um, the DSS operatives were in the court, we're yet to see it. We see people in Mufti, and Falana and his team want us to take their word for real. But the truth about it is that we can't. And the reason we can't is because we see videos of Showers um, and, his, um, and his supporters coming out of the courtroom. And I think that what actually really happened was that when they got out of the courtroom and saw that the DSS were outside, and by the way, nobody's arguing that the DSS was not outside. You know, they had every right to be in the court premises. The only place that, you know, an accused or, you know, a person cannot be um, arrested in is inside the courtroom when the court is in session. Now, all the arguments about, you know, the DSS being outside invading the premises of the court, there's really no rule prohibiting them from being there. There's no rule prohibiting them from being in the gear they wear. As a matter of fact, it would be absolutely, you know, um, stupid, for lack of a better word, to show up to arrest somebody in this climate, especially, you know, on a high-profile case like this, dressed without... The, I mean, without their gear, especially, you know, um, following from what happened in the South East not too long ago. People in but this country need to understand that we have a situation. It's a very peculiar one. We are fighting for the security of this country. And there's no point people carrying on as if to say, oh, you know what? Um, he was out there, Shower was out there trying to uh, make a speech. No, he wasn't. So the question is, how do we, how do we, down. Madam Henshaw, if I may, how do we explain the, yes. the what appeared to be physical brutalization inside the courtroom and what looked like an open threat to his life? What happened? The pictures we saw of Mr. Shore in court. How do we explain that? Yeah, you see, the issue really is who were those people? Who were the people holding Shore down? Were those his supporters shielding him, having run back into the courtroom? 
or were those um, DSS operatives? I mean, it, it, it just beats me that we had probably all the media in the country in, in, on the scene, and we can't seem to get, as a matter of fact, who those people were. You know, I see that the pictures of, you know, the people standing by Showa Rare, all the pictures have surfaced, still, still photos on, the, on the social media of those same people, the guy in an orange shirt, etc., standing behind Showa Rare with lifted fists. Now, if those were DSS um, operatives, why are they standing behind him, you know, with lifted fists? What are they, why are they standing behind him as if they're his supporters? So, you know what, it, it, it beats any, you know, imagination whatsoever. Let's come to our guests in, in country, Lagos. With all the media. Yeah. Let's come back to our guest in Lagos, Stanley. Uh, you've heard her response. And, you know, looking at that which has happened, the U.S. has also condemned this, saying that this doesn't show of uh, tenets of true democracy. Yeah, very well. Uh, in relation to what uh, my learned colleague just said, I think uh, we can excuse her because she has ordinarily spoken for the position of ignorance. Personally, we know the DSS officers involved in that commotion, in that desecration of the court. Yes, but she's saying you can't prove that. Now, let me give you specific instances. The, 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 uh, the, the guy that heads to wear it down completely, that guy is one guy called, uh, the operative is called Nekoneli, Masha. That is his name. And then, as, they were, as the matter was adjourned, and the, the next case called, Sowore was, and the, uh, uh, his co-defender we were stepping out suddenly, just by the entrance of the courtroom, DSS officer sought to arrest them. You could see how they move, uh, they push them into the, into the courtroom. It's very clear. And the fair guy in that other video, the fair guy, that is the leader of the team, of the DSS team. Now, back to the issue of uh, the US uh, reaction. Of course, US is the bastion of democracy. And we would not expect the United States of America to sit akimbo and watch this madness. As I said earlier, this is not the best time to be a lawyer in this country. So what I'm you... sure the vice president, who is a senior lawyer, is totally embarrassed. What happened in that, uh, on that particular day? It's worse than what happened at the National Assembly that resulted in the sack of the then uh, a boss of the DSS. So what do you expect to happen? What do you want to happen in the coming days? The matter was adjourned to February 2020. That's correct. Uh, of course, we are demanding for the release of uh, Mr. Sowery. If they think they have anything against him, let them take steps. But we, are, we adopt and employ all lawful means to compare them to comply with the rule of law. Finally, Madam Henshaw, what do you want to happen um, between now and when indeed uh, things resume in February? I think basically what needs to happen is what, you know, um, would, would project the best image for this country, which is that now that Shoara is in custody, the DSS needs to bring, you know, if they have any information that necessitated his rearrest, they need to bring that before the judge, uh, before a judge and let the court decide and also have another bail hearing. And that's pretty much how things have to unfold. Yeah, I'm not by public opinion and um, people vouching for who they recognize in the courthouse and expecting the entire nation right. to accept what they say. We appreciate your time on the program, uh, Madam Susan Henshaw, and also you here in Lagos, Mr. Stanley Ihura Roa. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Still to come on Non-Time Politics, Senate Committee Chairman Senator Jubrin Barao. He gives us an insight into the uh, 2020 bill, appropriation bill. We'll bring you details when we return. <laughs>